What'd they say? I'll tell you what they said. They said you're listening to Free Association on 91.3 Real College Radio with Mark Lane. They said you're listening to a show with constant movement, constant action. We go from a Mark Lane versus to true alternative music. And then back to the headlines and then back to the true alternative music. That's the kind of show you're listening to. And immediately after today's show... Uh, when it ends at 6 o'clock, I will be going in the car on my way back to Arkansas to see the blonde. You remember the blonde and the brunette, don't you? The blonde being uh, the, the army personnel in Afghanistan, the brunette being in Iraq. Anyway, so yeah, the blonde, the older sister there, she's back. She's in Arkansas. She's back from Afghanistan. And, you know, I, I got to see her. I, I have to because whenever I had cancer, her family, they'd do nice things for me. The blonde would give me the... A uh, sandwich from the sandwich shop that she worked at. A free one at that, too. Uh, Mrs. S., she'd uh, send me some jokes, you know. And then the father, the agnostic father there that we called the one because he always, you know, like had the final ruling on the suitors. Ah, this guy's too clingy. This one's a cheater. He's too homeschooled. Get him out of here, you know. Anyway, he prayed over me. Big feet for an agnostic. So anyway, like I said, the blonde, she's back in Arkansas. And I, I have to see her. I have to. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. Oh, Michael, did you hear what happened to me? Did you hear what happened to me, Don? Well, you know, but that, like I said, that's for the end of the show. But what's for right now is the journey. Because as Lincoln Park sang, in the end, no matter what I pretend, the journey is more important than the end or the start. And the journey today includes headlines, Mark Lane verses, jokes, and... Let's not forget the true alternative music. Here we have Ryan Adams and the Cardinals with Sync Ships. Request line is open at 918 343 7913. Let's look at the headlines. You know, you remember Bernie Madoff, don't you? The uh, the guy that was in that that, that was involved with the fifty billion dollar Ponzi scheme? Yeah, well they're putting him away for hundred and fifty years in jail. It he he is planning, it's said that, you know, he's going to plead guilty to 11 criminal counts. And prosecutors are seeking triple the damages of the, uh, the $50 billion there. They're looking at roughly $170 billion that's going to come out of Madoff's uh, deep pockets there, you know, which is standard in a case like this. Oh, and the Daily News here, they call him a crook. I, n I never thought I would, I would see that in the, in the media. Usually they say, oh, someone is alleged, or that, you know, that kind of thing. They never call out, I'm an outright crook. Okay. The 70-year-old crook confined to a $7 million penthouse, yeah, under penthouse arrest there. Anyway, he was snuck in the courthouse uh, to avoid a clash with angry investors. Uh, and in the Washington Times, here's and some news out of there. The Department of Homeland Security plans to study the possibility that human body odor might be used to determine when people are lying or to identify individuals in the same way that fingerprints can. <laughs> uh, the last clause there, I think they should put money into that one. They shouldn't put too much because it would be pretty easy to figure out. Can you imagine that? So somebody's walking down the hall at work, you don't know who it is. Is that Johnson? Yeah, I think it is. How can you tell? Uh, who else wears a, uh, doesn't wear deodorant? <laughs> uh, maybe maybe they could do that. And so, you know they're coming out with like a national ID card program thing, right? Well, maybe instead of that, they'll just ban deodorant, and then they can identify it's that way. I and mean, we wouldn't have to get a card or a chip or anything. Okay, uh, out of US t USA Today, dogs allowed, creature comforts at the workplace. Uh, so, they let, so the workplace is going to the dogs. Well, I'll tell you some something that's not going to the dogs, it's actually going to the cats, is the Hillcat Sock Op. Are you lying? Oh, the Eagles of Death Metal, uh, they want to be in L.A. That was the last song there. Yeah, well, sometimes the, the stream of consciousness I have in my speech class, I want to be someplace else, too, but my frequent flyer miles of my un unconscious can only take me so many places. I do have to keep myself you know, awake in that class. Now, I'm not suggesting by any means that, you know, I'm a know-it-all in, in class. Heaven knows that. Believe me, heaven knows that. There's there's one class I'm taking writing for the media. All if they, You're going to find out there's a global red pen sh shortage because all the red pens are being used to grade my papers. So, you know, believe me, I'm not a know-it-all. But in, I am a know-it-all, I guess, in speech class because, I don't know, I, I've, done, I've done public speaking before, you know, that kind of thing, so I keep myself 
awake during that class, one of the things I do is I listen to these two girls in the class. You know, they speak like girls do these days. I count how many times they say like when they talk to the professor. That's what keeps me awake. Uh, Wednesday nights, you know, they're pretty boring. You know, you're almost to the weekend. You're not there yet, that kind of thing. Well, what you can do to keep yourself awake and active is listen to Tip Toasty's Riot Radio right here on 91.3 Real College Radio from 7 to 9. Ladies and gentlemen, in this corner weighing 120 pounds soaking wet, your Portsmouth Fireball, your champion of chicken, your deluxe dueling DJ, he's got clock and ready to rock, Doc. It's Mark Lane. Yeah, well, I'm in tandem today because I, I have my dad to help me out with this one. All right, so two weeks ago, I decided to go home for his uh, 64th birthday, surprise him, show up at the at the uh, cousin, little cousin's basketball game that he went to attend, and surprise him. Oh, hey, Mark, how you doing? Here? At the boys' club there. So anyway, we go outside, and we get ready to leave, and we notice somebody backed in to his car, you know, backed into the bumper of his car there. You know, and he's all upset, uh, uh, giving blessings upon this anonymous person. Anyway, after the benediction was over, he's like, all right, well, let's see what place. I, I feel like going out for Chinese. So, you know, we call, we call a Chinese place. Uh, but you have to remember, this is Van Buren. This is a dry county. And, I'm, you know, I'm telling you point blank, they close at 9. I, I can put away the rubber hose there. It's a, it's a fact. So... So we call a Chinese place, we go to a buffet and steaks kind of place, they all close it, even the Mexican places close up at night. All right, fine. So we go across the river uh, into Fort Smith, you know, into a steakhouse, you know, they, they don't close till 11. So we go in, I see some acquaintances 20 feet away, and I figure, yeah, I'll talk to them later when they get up to leave. So where does the server put us? In the big restaurant where it's spacious. There, there are tables everywhere, and they're all clean, they're not dirty. They put us right next to those people, my acquaintances, so I'm a foot away, and still same strategy. I'll say something when they get up to leave. So anyway, my dad and I, we get the exact same steak. It's supposedly the biggest steak, you know, that the steakhouse has to offer. So they bring him out, and you know, he, his looks small. And so he says to the waitress, you know, you think this is the same steak? And she says, uh, you know, well, why yes. And so he says, you know, that now he gets sarcastic here. Yeah, well, let me get my glasses. And he puts them on. These aren't the same size. This is like a junior version of his. And he points to mine, you know. So the the next table next, you know, the acquaintances, they're busting out laughing. So my dad says to me, give me your steak. You know, in that parental tone that makes you feel like nine years old, like that your freshman year of college goes up in smoke, like you're barely out of kindergarten there, you know, it's in that tone. So I give him my steak, you know, and, he, and my dad does everything, he, every kind of comparison in the world for this waitress. He puts them side by side. He uses, uh, he puts his steak, his small steak, on top of mine, and the, the you know, there are no edges. I mean, there are edges coming around and stuff. I, if he would have had scales, I think he would have probably used them. So anyway, she keeps, you know, saying, oh, no, they're the same size. So, all right, get the manager over here. So... Anyway, the manager, same thing. Oh, no, they're the same size, sir. You know, that kind of thing. So, same thing. Just holds them up, puts it on top of this one, da-da-da-da. And so then, so then, you know, the manager says, well, your steak is more dense. So then my dad says, smaller is the word you're looking for. All right, so then the, the you know, the manager gives in. She says, okay, we'll take the steak back and we'll have another one out in five minutes. And then that still doesn't satisfy my dad. Well, if it only takes you five minutes to make a steak, why did it take you this long to bring out this one? <laughs> so then, I mean, everybody, the, the, the acquaintances are cracking up laughing. The girl and her girlfriends are all just laugh, dying laughing at every little thing that my dad says. You know, I take it okay. Anyway, one of the acquaintance's girlfriend says to my dad, Are you a negative person? And so I look back at her and I say, Are you drunk? You know, I mean, what are you doing butting in like this? So she keeps going with my dad. You know, you don't seem like a happy person, she says to my dad. So then my dad, oh, my dad, you know, he gets ready. He says, I'm not happy and I'm not stupid. Can you say both of these things truthfully? So, I mean, later, then it all comes out. The cat's out of the bag. The acquaintance realizes who I am and says, You're Mark Lane. Hey, how are you doing? You know, oh, great. Yeah. 
So anyway, later after the two the two girlfriends leave, you know, the acquaintance comes over and apologizes, you know, um, for the butting in of that thing. Anyway, it turns out the girl that piped up was 13 years old and her stepsister and had a behavioral problem. How do you like that? So my dad and I, we cut into a 13-year-old girl. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, there, there it is. So there it is for you. This concludes another installment of Mark Lane Versus. Tune in next week for more exciting action, adventure, and romance. The views and opinions expressed by Mark Lane do not necessarily reflect the opinions of this station. Mark Lane does not actually support these physical violence as a means for problem solving. No animals were actually harmed during the making of this broadcast. <laughs>